everybody. This is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I've got another crowdfunding preview for you. This time it's Leviathan Wilds. This is a one to four player cooperative game, very much inspired by Shadow of the Colossus, which is one of my favorite video games where you're climbing these giant colossal creatures and trying to defeat them. And I'm going to show you a full playthrough with the true solo mode in the game, and at the end of the video, I will give my thoughts and impressions. And a reminder that, as always, we never accept any compensation for our coverage of crowdfunding games. We just want to help you make an informed decision. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month. Last month, for example, I ranked my favorite boss battling games. We also have a separate streaming channel with even more content, a weekly podcast, and a Discord if you'd like to come and talk to us. So before we get into the playthrough, let's look at the core gameplay loop. And you're playing in this uh, bound book. Everything, of course, right now is a prototype. And you're actually trying to save the Leviathans instead of like Shadow of the Colossus defeat them. They're being corrupted by these uh, crystals spread around them, represented by the dice. And each player has a little climber. Again, prototypes, these are like hand painted. Uh, and you're trying to move along these little nodes, these little uh, spaces of movement to get to these spots and destroy the corrupting crystals. If you destroy all of them, you immediately win. You have uh, rescued that Titan. And there's also these purple cubes. Those are kind of like experience for the campaign mode to give you uh, better rewards, uh, but they're not required to win. Now, each Leviathan, besides having a unique board, also has a unique deck of cards. And that's the first step of a turn. You reveal the top threat card. And it's going to tell you what the boss is going to do, usually at the end of the turn. So you get to see what it is before you take your turn so you can try to avoid it. And each of the threat cards for a Leviathan will have a basic effect in the top half and an enraged effect in the bottom half that will have a value in teal here. And that corresponds to the token location on their rage track. This is how you do a difficulty. You can start on a different space. The further along you start, the harder the game. I'm going to try on hard and probably lose. And if the current rage value, in this case 1, is equal to or greater than the enrage value on the card, in this case 4 or more, you use the nastier version of the threat card. So here I would uh, be using the basic version, but if the rage was at a 4 or a 5 or all the way down here, I would have this nastier one. And once you've gone through all five of the Leviathan's cards, you reshuffle them and you move the rage track down one. So that's how the game kind of ramps up as you go. Once you've revealed the threat card and checked the rage, then you activate your climber. We'll get to that in a second. That's kind of the uh, main bulk of the gameplay. Then you resolve the threat card. You uh, do whatever it said you had to do. And finally, you draw back to a hand of three cards. Now, here's what your climbers look like. There are four of these in the game. Right now, I'm using Mystic and Fix. And in true solo mode, you still control two climbers, but you have a combined deck for them, so it's not uh, too much of a hassle. Each of them has a health value and a blight value. Uh, some things will deal blight damage to you, increasing your blue value. Some will deal health damage, decreasing this. If they ever meet, you are defeated, and every other player only gets one more round to win. So there is player elimination, but not really because the game ends almost immediately afterwards, usually with you losing, so try not to die. But how the action phase actually goes is you'll have three cards in your hand generally. And kind of like the threat cards, you've got a top and a bottom half. The top half has an AP value. This is how many action points you'll get if you play this as your action card for the turn. And they'll sometimes have one of three icons. And these correspond to icons on the board. If you move through a yellow or a red or attack a blue die, you'll suffer negative consequences. But if you have the matching icon, you're immune to those consequences during your activation phase. So like if I wanted to climb through this yellow one, it would loosen my grip. I would have to discard some cards. But if I had played Scramble as my action card for the turn, it would have no negative consequence on me. So in each climber's turn, you just kind of slot in a card of your choice. And that's how many actions you'll have for the turn. They're all uh, summarized here, but I'll go over them in a second. But also each card has a bottom effect called a skill, and you can use this basically at any time, even on another player's turn. So in solo, you can use them on either climber, and in co-op, you can use them to help each other out. And they'll do things like moving you, or giving you bonuses to your attack, or all kinds of stuff. This is where a lot of the variety in the characters comes in. Now, a key concept in the game is grip, just like in, uh, again, the video game Shadow of the Colossus. Sorry, I'm referring to it so much, but they've done a really good job of uh, kind of translating that vibe. Your stamina, your grip slowly weakens as you're climbing around in the Leviathan. If you don't rest, then you'll fall. So how it works in this game is your deck represents your grip, and as you're drawing cards, you're weakening it and weakening it. And the second that your deck is empty, no matter how many cards you have in your hand, your climber, wherever they are, starts falling. Ah! 
And they fall until, in the column they're in, they reach a space with this little uh, white underline there, which is a rest spot. And you'll notice that the ground, of course, is all made up of rest spots. So here I would have gone poop, and you fall right there. So sometimes that can be a strategic thing to do. You can even choose to let yourself fall at any time. But it automatically happens whenever your grip is empty. So what do you do about your grip, and how do you move around? Well, let's go through the actions. Again, the card you play for action points will give you some actions. For one AP, you can climb one space in an orthogonal direction. There needs to be an arrow connecting it. So if I was here for one AP, I could go there, or for one AP, I could go here, but I couldn't, uh, well, I mean, I could <laughs> move into there, but I'd fall immediately because I'm in open space and I couldn't like go diagonally to there. But for three AP, you can jump two spaces, ignoring the first space. So I could go and jump straight over to there, or I could uh, jump diagonally to there if I wanted to. And again, you don't uh, deal with the space in between which can allow you to avoid things like uh, the red spaces deal one heart damage to you, the yellow spaces force you to discard one card from your grip, from your deck, making it closer to falling, and whenever you attack a blue die with a strike action, we'll get to that in a second, you uh, suffer one of the blue damage, the blight. Okay, for XAP, you can glide X number of spaces. This one could be a little weird to understand at first. Basically, picture a diagonal cone going from where your climber is, and anywhere within there, you can land with a glide, and the number of vertical spaces you travel is how much AP you spent. So for two AP, I could go from here. I could go here, or here, or any of these spaces in between. So it's kind of like you're gliding down and then stopping yourself. For two AP, if you're on a rest space, you can rest. In a multiplayer game, that gets your entire deck back into your grip. In the true solo variant, where you have more cards in your deck, we'll get to that in a second, you only get seven cards back, so not everything. Uh, for one AP, you can mend. That just heals your red one. You can never heal blue blight. For one AP, you can examine. That picks up a purple little experience thing there for the campaign. And then for XAP, you can strike. If you're on a spot with one of the crystals, one of the dice, the number of AP you spend is how much damage you do, how much you tick it down. If it goes down to zero, it's removed. So like here, if I did a two or more AP strike, that would be destroyed. But you can also partially damage them and then like finish them off in a future turn. Now, the only reason that XAP matters is because each uh, instance of spending XAP is one strike, and every single strike on a blue blighted crystal causes you to take one of that blue damage, increasing your blue cube towards death. But that's for each individual strike. So if I spent three AP all at once to blow up this crystal, I would only take one blighted damage. But let's say on one turn I spent two to get it down to one, and then on a future turn I spent the other one. That would be two different strikes. I would take two blighted damage, really uh, accelerate my death. So those are the basics of playing, but the game also has a campaign system, and the boss I've chosen to fight is the latest one they've created, the fifth one, I think, in the campaign. Because I wanted to show you some more complicated and interesting stuff. So at first, at the start of a game, all you have to do is pick a character, and you get their four cards, and you pick a class. There are four of them to start, and you get their six cards, so you create a ten-card deck just through combining. But as you might expect, in a campaign, you unlock stuff as you go. Eventually, I think you're going to have like 10 to 15 different classes to choose from. Although uh, for a class, you always get all six of their cards. There's no like deck construction there. But for the characters, you keep unlocking more cards for them. And what you do is you always bring four into a battle. And the value, uh, the action point value, which is like a general assessment of how strong the card is, that has to add up to 16 or less from those four cards. So an average of four. Or another way to think of it is, for every five you take, you have to take a three as well. And additionally, starting after the first fight, you unlock these mementos. These are usually, I think, in the prototype, all of them are one-time use for each scenario. But uh, later on, you'll get ones that you can, like, use each time you rest. And these are, like, little super powerful abilities. So you get some for your own heroes, but then also each leviathan you rescue gives you one as well. So you'll have, uh, I guess, a whole, whole bunch of these once you've beaten the campaign. Now, for true solo, the only difference is that you only pick one class, but then you build out your heroes the same way as I just mentioned, picking four cards, adding up to 16 out of all that you've unlocked. So you get one combined deck of 14 cards instead of your own deck of 10 cards. And again, in the multiplayer game, the rest action for 2 AP will get all 10 of your cards back in your grip, potentially. Whereas uh, for the true solo mode, you only get seven cards back in your grip, seven random cards from your discard pile. So for today, I've been switching up uh, who I'm playing with each time. I'm trying out the Mender class, which is very much focused on healing. 
And then I'm doing Mystic, who is uh, often a ranged fighter, and ranged combat is great because you don't suffer blight from attacking those blue crystals. And Fix, who is also a bit of a healer and a helper. So I'm going to, uh, off-camera, build out four cards for each of them, plus the Mender deck, and we'll get going. And for Mementos, uh, Mystic's going to take Power Nap. That's his own Memento. It says any climber within four spaces may cycle four cards of their choice. That means bring them back from their discard pile. It uh, doesn't really matter as much of the within four spaces because he can choose himself, and since it's one shared deck in solo. And then Fix chose a memento for the Leviathan we just rescued, Avalanche. He can glide up to one space, then strike for one, then glide up to two and strike for two. So it's kind of like movement and attack combined. Now, one final thing before we jump in. Uh, the Leviathans get more complicated and more interesting as they go. And this one we're fighting, the Watcher, they start out with their eye closed. It's actually represented by a card, like, on the board. I'll show you in a second. And it's got a crystal pool of 10 life worth, basically for its entire eye. We can attack on any spot of the eye. Yeah, we have to destroy that, just like the crystals. The dice to represent the eye's health are supposed to go on the card itself, but uh, for ease of filming, I thought it'd be better just to put them right there. But again, I can attack them from any of these spots on the card. And some of the Leviathan's cards will cause the eye to open, and while the eye is open, most of their cards become way nastier, but any successful attack on the eye while I'm on these spaces will cause it to close again. So that's sort of like the key unique thing about this one. So the last thing to pick before we go is where we're each going to spawn in. Um, let's see, I'm thinking maybe like split the left and the right. This center one we can come back to later. The thing is, it's much harder to climb up than it is to fall down. So often in the game, I'll like get to the top, but skip some dice and then like fall or glide down to them later. All right, I got to pick who's going to start. Um, they don't have a token for this yet. So I'm going to say that my first character is the mystic, the yellow guy. And he's ready to uh, potentially do a jump for three AP up to here and then go up to that to die and maybe start blasting it. And again, we're starting on one Rage, which is hard mode. You could go to two for Expert. Uh, besides just challenging yourself more, that's also a way to earn more rewards in the campaign and unlock more stuff. So, uh, yeah. So to explain this first card, first of all, we don't have four raids. So we can ignore that. This has a little targeting symbol here and then an arrow going left and right. And then it's got these red spots with arrows going left and right, which are only active if the eye is open. So basically he's attacking the row that the current climber is in. And at the end of the round, everyone in that row is going to suffer two health damage. And to mark that, you put this little targeting circle over the current climber's space. And the reason for that is even if you move, the targeting thing stays the same because, you know, they're giant leviathans and it takes them a little while to prep their swing. So uh, if I, for example, move yellow out of the way, he won't get hit by this. Unfortunately, green is right in the line of fire. And here are the cards I got. And pull up the only one that gives us movement. It can move your climber two spaces up or uh, diagonally. That's what the white circles represent. But unless otherwise indicated, cards only apply to the active climber. So long story short, Fix is not going to be able to escape the uh, sweeping gaze smacking him for two health. That's okay. So I have to pick which card uh, Mystic's going to use for his actions. These are both fives. So uh, the Radiance one says each climber may gain one heart. And back on your feet says any climber may gain two hearts and cycle two and stop falling if they were falling. So I'd say between the two, back on your feet is probably stronger. It also ignores red, whereas Radiance ignores nothing. Pull up, on the other hand, I think I want to save for now with the uh, nice movement ability it has. So let's go ahead and do uh, Radiance for my action card. So I'm going to have five AP. I'm gonna, and I'm going to put a die on the character to show how many AP I have remaining because it's easy to forget while I'm filming and everything. So I want to get up toward that die. So first for three AP, I'm going to jump two spaces. And that gets me right over that open space there. Although I could have just played pull up to do the exact same movement for free, couldn't I? You know what? Yeah, let's do that. Because yes, it's terrible to use cards for their skills because then your grip runs out, you go through your deck faster. But it's also awesome to use cards for their skills because it speeds up everything you're doing and you can just get them back by resting anyway. So forget the 3 AP, I'm going to use pull up to move straight to there. And that's free, skills don't cost any action points. So then my first AP will be there. Three more to blow up that first crystal. It is not blue. I think there'll be teal in the final version, so I don't take any blight damage from it. It's just gone. That leaves me with one AP left. Uh, I guess like I probably want to go here and then jump up to there. Oh, and that's a rest spot to uh, start getting ready to blow up that blight crystal. And all I have left in my hand is back on your feet, but nobody needs to heal yet. Uh, we don't really have enough cards in our discard pile, so that's not going to be worthwhile playing. So that's the end of my activation. I do discard the action card I picked uh, just to kind of remind you that you don't get the icons if there were any as bonuses, like that card is now in your discard pile. And now we resolve the threat. So it's sweeping gazes, just the row where I was, minus two hearts. So bee, shoots out a little laser and uh, fix takes two, bringing him down to six. Not too bad. And to finish out Mystic's turn, I draw two. 
And to finish out Mystic's turn, I draw two more cards, and now it's Fix. Okay, and his threat is all seeing. The next climber will take one damage or discard one card. If the eye was open, we resolve it twice. And if we had three rage, which we don't, it'd be way worse. It'd be either more damage or your highest AP card. So yeah, we're not doing that. And this says next climber, by the way, so it's going to affect Mystic, not to fix the current active player. All right, let's see what we got. Ooh, we got dash, which can move us two uh, spaces in any direction. Again, ignoring anything in between, just like a jump. Feeling good is climb one space and strike one space. And if you have full health, then you get plus one to one of those values. So right now Mystic would get that, but Fix would not. So, hmm. I'm thinking I might just kind of go through my whole hand and play a little fast and loose here because Mystic is about to be able to jump to a spot where we can rest. So I could use back on my feet to fully heal Fix and uh, cycle two cards. The stop falling would not apply. And I could play uh, Feeling Good for Actions and use Dash to get up to that blue die and smash it in one go. Yeah, I like all of this. So I will go ahead and select Feeling Good for the action. It does mean that Fix is going to be immune to red and yellow, and that'll matter in a moment. Then I'm going to, in quick succession, use both of these. So Dash will get me two spaces of movement, and back on my feet will heal Fix two and let us cycle two cards. We'll use that one first and go ahead and cycle both of these. They get shuffled and put on the bottom of the deck. Fix is also healing two. Then he dashes two spaces right over the gap for free. We still have four action points. One, this yellow would have made us discard a card, but feeling good made us immune. So we don't have to lose from our grip. And then the last three, boom, but this was a blue die. So Fix is now permanently having one blight damage. Uh, not great, but not too bad yet. And all right, we went through our entire hand that time. So next climber, minus one heart or discard one card. You have to pick the one you can do, I believe. So since we don't have any cards yet, Mystic has to take one damage. It takes him down to seven. And then we'll draw back up to three cards. So gotta say, pretty good start so far. I've destroyed uh, two of the bottommost crystals. And we have uh, Mystic in a pretty good spot to jump up to the next one. Fix can try to get this experience point. And then a bit above him will be the white. And hopefully we're on pace to get to the eye around when it first opens. So we can just close it right away again with an attack. But let's see what the Watcher has to say about that. Baleful Strike. Five raids, so still not counting. We're just doing the basic effect. Whoever has the most health, which right now would be Fix, takes two damage or three if the eye is open. That's really not that bad. All right, Mystic. Let's see, we've got Ascend. Another nice movement one, although it has to be partially diagonal. Ooh. Ooh, I think that... Might work for... Yeah, I'll have to look in a second, but I think that'll get him right to the blue die he wanted to attack. Heal. Any climber may gain one health. Uh, you'll see that the three cards tend to be weaker. It's kind of like <laughs> using them for AP or for their skill. Neither one is great. And Relic Staff, I really like this one. Uh, the blue means that if you pick this for your AP, you won't suffer blight damage when you attack one of those blue dice. But the skill is also great. This one is plus one range to your strike. And if an attack is ranged, then you don't suffer blight damage anyway. And if the current threat card is enraged, plus one to that strikes. Enraged, again, meaning if the rage track is uh, equal to or greater than this. So right now that would not apply. See, I want to get Mystic here and then to here, or I guess to here, and then like use the Relic Staff to blast it. Let's see, I'm thinking if I played Relic Staff for the four AP and being immune to Blight, I could spend one AP to get here, ascend, let's see, one, two, and then over one, like a knight, boom, to there, and I would lose one grip from the yellow, but I would have three AP left to blow this up. I mean, that just sounds like the way to go. So that's what we're doing. The yellow did make me lose one grip, but I don't take any blight damage. So boom, that was a quick destruction. And now uh, Mystic is perfectly set up to walk over one and rest in a second. Or heck, Fix can uh, jump up here and rest as well. Because we do have six cards in our discard pile. Seven is how many you uh, shuffle back in whenever you use a rest action in solo. So it seems like a good time. I do have heal left. Uh, any climber may gain one. You know what? Sure. Since I'm about to get a bunch of uh, options to rest anyway, I'll go ahead and use this uh, before my turn ends on Mystic. Get him to eight health. Now he's tied with Fix. And whenever targets are tied, like for the Baleful Strike here, hitting the most health climber with minus two, we can pick. Which, even though it's a minor bonus, I like, because now I can hurt Mystic, who has zero Blight damage, instead of Fix, who has one. Just keep him slightly further from death. And I can't forget, even though they won't be in frame often, or we've got Power Nap to cycle four cards back into our deck. Uh, we'll probably use that when we're about to fall, and we don't have an easy way to rest. Or Avalanche to glide and attack. I think that'll be a later thing when we've probably climbed up the Watcher some. So that was Baleful Stare. We are close to reshuffling. And we get three new cards. Dino, Watch Out, and Telekinesis. All right, let's go into Fix's next turn. 
Bloodshot. Wow, that is a big range of attack. So um, this is, remember, being calculated from Fix. So like two up, two down, two to the left, two to the right, plus a bunch of diagonals, two damage if you get hit. Which actually is not too bad, because if he goes two up and one over, literally a two, the little thing he wanted to grab anyway, this will not hit him, and clearly it's very far away from Mystic. Oh, geez, I guess this Dino card would get him straight there, wouldn't it? Hmm. Now, dudes, be careful. I only have four cards left in my grip in my deck, so if I, like, use three of them here, <laughs> I might be putting myself in a bit of a tight spot. Although, maybe not too much, because, again, both of them are right next to rest spots. So, yeah, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? I only need one AP to grab the purple cube. Uh, Watch Out, by the way, is a great one because it lets any climber move to. Now, you can't make any forward, uh, upward progress, but it's an awesome one for, like, that card I had at the beginning where somebody was getting hit. Uh, it lets somebody else move, like, on your turn. Telekinesis is amazing, plus two range to whatever strike you pay for with action points. And remember, range also uh, prevents you from taking damage from blue, the uh, Blight dice. But I don't think I need that right now. Neither of my characters is actually near a Blighted dice. So I think I'd rather have the five AP. Whoops. <laughs> okay, crud. He was at, what was he at? He took two damage uh, from eight. So yeah, he was at six. Okay, so yeah, Telekinesis will give a uh, fix five AP. There we go, just to remind me. Then we've got Dino and Watch Out to play around with if we need to. I don't think we're going to use Watch Out yet. So let's see. If I use Dino to here, one to grab that, two, three, four. I'd lose some grip because I didn't have a yellow icon. Uh, and then five, I guess I could start punching that. Or wait, if I Dino here, one, two, three, four to rest, five up there. I like that a lot better because there's no hurry to attack that uh, white die. So yeah, this will be free. That already takes me out of range. Spend one AP to grab that out of my five. Two to go there, three, four to rest, five just to get out of range of this bloodshot attack. And I'm taking our whole discard pile, shuffling it all up, taking seven cards, putting them on the bottom of the action deck. And again, that's just in true solo. In a regular game where you have a 10-card deck, you would just get all your discard back to your uh, deck. And I'm not going to use Watch Out yet. That's a nice one to save for somebody else's turn, and I don't want to move Fix away from that white die. All right, so Bloodshot triggers, but we are out of range, so no harm, no foul. And we draw two more cards. We pretty much got our entire deck back there, so I'm feeling pretty good. All right, now we go to Mystic's turn. Now, this card, when you set up the Watcher, is always the bottommost card because it's the card that flips the eye open uh, at any rage value, so they want to give you, like, a nice kind of uninterrupted number of turns. But... You'll notice that Bloodshot, once you have two plus Rage, which we're about to when we shuffle this, flips the eye open, and Blink flips the eye open, and they'll be shuffled in. So we'll have two out of five cards open in that eye to boost the other Leviathan cards uh, for the rest of the game. Yikes. But for right now, this does have one plus Rage. So the Active Climber is going to take one uh, Blight damage and get pushed one space down. If they got pushed into open space, they would fall. So whatever else he ends up doing, so whatever else he ends up doing, I have to make sure that Fix is in a space where he can get pushed one down, like right here, would not work. Um, maybe like there, and then he can get pushed back down to there. Maybe I can just have him run all the way over to the eye. We don't need to rest at the moment. Fix took care of that. Uh, I've got plus two to your strike or block two damage as it's coming in. Uh, only red damage, though. Watch out. We already saw. It doesn't really apply here. Well, I guess it could move him to the left. And then invigorate. Any climber may gain two health. That would actually help Mystic out, so I might use that. But I think I'm going to use uh, Old Rusty for my action and get four action points. And then we'll see if we want to use Watch Out or Heal Ourself. So in an ideal world, I think I'd like to be one, two, three, four, five spaces over. And then if I get pushed down by Blink, it's not going to hurt too much. And I'll be right on the eye, ready to uh, attack it once it opens. So sure, to that end, let's go ahead and use Watch Out to move uh, two to the right. Still have four AP, so we'll go one, two, uh, three, I guess. I don't really want to go one more up for four because that would just hurt me and then I'd get pushed down anyway. So with one AP left, I was thinking I would discard Invigorate to heal two, but I'll just uh, heal one with that last AP with the Mend action and keep that card for now. All right, so Blink is giving me one Blighted damage. I'm getting pushed down one, did not fall. And then the eye flips open. Oh Lord, oh help me, that is unsettling. And yeah, now Mystic has one Blighted damage too. All right. And uh-oh, <laughs> we're going to shuffle these up and we are at two rage value, which means two of the five cards will now have their boosted effects, both the ones that relate to the eye opening. And that's how things will look when we go into Fix's turn. Let's see if the open eye is going to hurt us. All seeing, uh, we don't have three. Minus one or discard one card. This is the next climber, so Mystic. And if the eye is open, we have to resolve that twice, and it is. 
and Mystic could hit it to close it, but he's over there and uh, <laughs> Fix is over here. So I think we're just gonna suffer that effect. Okay, let's see what Fix has available. We got pull up to move uh, up or diagonally. It's not really great for where he is. Radiance, each climber may gain one health. And Invigorate, any climber may gain two health. I think we're going to do uh, Radiance for the 5 AP again. Yeah. Actually, is 5 AP enough? Uh, one, two, three to blow it up. I would like to jump over there, but that would require one more AP. So maybe not. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll use Invigorate instead for 4 AP. That'll be one. We do uh, suffer the yellow effect here and discard one card from the top of our deck. Two, three. And what do I do with my fourth AP? Hmm. Because I kind of want to stay here to jump, or maybe like even get up to there with a special card. Pull up won't get me anywhere I want to go. I can't heal uh, fix right now. So yeah, I think I'm just going to burn one AP. That's a bit of a bummer. Okay, then we got to do this. The next climber, minus one, or discard one card. And I got to resolve it twice. So let's see. For two AP, I can heal the two damage if I took the hearts. For two AP, I can rest and get seven cards back. So, I'm pretty close to a resting spot. I think I'm going to discard both the cards and maintain my health. I think that's a little bit more economical and efficient in terms of action usage. Oh, wait, no, no. Then I would have... <laughs> what am I talking about? Then I wouldn't have any cards for next turn. If you have no cards on your turn, you just have to do a 2 AP action. That would not be enough. So, never mind. Let's switch that entirely. Take the 2 damage on Mystic. Ouch! He's getting close to dead. He'll definitely have to heal as he goes. And, ooh, Dino, I think that's, like, literally the perfect card for uh, Fix to jump right where he wants to go. That's awesome. So we'll definitely save that for him. All right, and as we start Mystic's turn, okay, Baleful Stare. It's going to be minus two, minus three if the eye is open. That would almost kill him. But he can hit the eye closed before he does anything else. Hmm, but sadly, we don't have any teal icon cards to prevent the damage that'll occur. But, you know, it's okay. we got to destroy that uh, eye at some point anyway. So definitely not using Dino, but pull-up might work. Um, let's go with Radiance for Mystic's actions. Get five. And let's see. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I smack the eye from where I am. Then I move over one. Pull up diagonally to there. Skipping that. Maybe grab that thing. And then, like, heal a bit. So I got five AP. I'm still going to be taking a lot of damage, so I need to kind of heal him or I'm in big trouble. So attack one. Free move, maybe two to grab that. I think I'll hit this for three, because we do want to do a decent amount of damage to it each time. Now, unfortunately, even when you've destroyed the uh, crystals on it, and this is like a combined 10, so if I did like four damage right now, it would wrap around to that die. Even when you've destroyed those crystals, the eye will still keep on opening up and messing with you. So I'm going to hit it for three. That means uh, two or three more good hits will be enough to take care of it. Lose it with two AP, uh, so I'm going to go one. Pull up to here, skipping over that, and I'm actually going to heal myself for one, not grab that uh, experience one yet. Because immediately after, the eye hits me for two. Oh, and I took one from uh, hitting the blighted die. <sighs> yeah, that's, uh, that's not great. That's not great. Hopefully nothing that uh, targets Fix in a second will also target Mystic, because that'd be bad. But speaking of Fix, we did keep the Dino card for him. And, ooh, any climber may gain two. Cycle two. Okay, that's a great card. Uh, we can use that on Mystic in a second. Yes. But first, what I'm really wondering is, is the next card going to open the eye? There's a pretty good chance it will. Yup. Oh, and it's going to push Fix down one. <sighs> okay, okay. So Fix is definitely going to Dino up. Um, I really want to use Back on Your Feet for Mystic or even save it for him to get 5 AP. But I don't know if 3 AP is enough for... Fix to do what needs to be done. I mean, I guess it could be because I could dino to here for free, spend uh, two of the three AP just to rest, move one for the last one and get pushed right back to there by the blink. That's that's reasonable, right? That's pretty reasonable. Then I would save the uh, five with the healing effect for Mystic if needed. Because yeah, really having a couple more AP wouldn't help us much. It'd just go through some crappy area, get pushed onto it, take damage again, have to climb back up there again. I'd really be hurting myself a ton more. See, so yeah, I'm going to use a jump for 3 AP, dino my way up to there, uh, 2 AP to rest and get 7 cards back, 1 AP to go there for the push. And then, yeah, uh, the blink pushes us down, it opens the dang eye, and one of the two remaining cards opens it again, so I don't even know if it's worth like going over and punching it right now. And Fix takes his second blighted damage, but he's looking way better than Mystic. Well, at least we got some more cards. Ooh, dash, that could be helpful. Ascend, that could be very helpful. I'm liking all this movement. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of hoping I get the open the eye card again. Um, no, oh, that's not great. Um, so <laughs> this is going to hit 
Uh, it's going to start on Mystic Spot right here, which means uh, because the eyes are open, even though he's on a different row, Fix is right in the line of fire, too. So if Mystic like ran over and popped the eye again, Fix would not get hurt. Uh, but that would take a lot of time. It would run us right over this thing that steals our hand. Now, the good news is if Mystic does what he was going to do and like ascends up to there to attack that eye, then he won't get hit, so it'll just be uh, Fix taking two damage. That's really not the end of the world, I think. And the very next card we know is going to open the eye up, so why should we care about closing it now? All right, so looking at these, uh, Back on Your Feet is such an absurd skill card, because two health is, like, worth two AP. Cycling two is, like, a partial rest action. I'm thinking I'm going to play Ascend for its AP. Use Dash, move me up to the white die, and, like, play Back on Your Feet on Mystic to heal me a bunch. So let's go for that. See, so yeah, I'm going to dash right here. It does take away one of our cards from the yellow effect. But I am now out of range. Oh, I forgot. Uh, before I leave, I will spend one of my 4 AP to grab that. Not really necessary in a one-off like this, but I'm pretending I'm playing the campaign. I got 3 AP left, so I'll smash that guy. And I got 1 AP left. Let's go ahead and heal. And I, uh, I guess I should go ahead and use back on my feet, right? Oh, geez. Fix is still on a rest spot, so definitely. Okay, so I'm going to heal 2 and cycle 2. That's randomly from all the cards in here. And I haven't used the stop falling effect yet, but that can be pretty awesome if you like let yourself drop and then fall to the like exact right spot and use this. But boom, so I'm uh, almost fully healed again. That's excellent. Sadly, once again, a fix gets caught in somebody else's sweeping gaze. Zoomp, takes out just two life. We're not at four rage yet. So he's feeling okay, he's feeling okay. All right, that means the final card is another one that opens the eye uh, after it does crazy attack. Yeah, it's a much wider range now that we have two plus rage. Um, and wow, for three damage. I really don't want to be hit by that. So it goes two in every direction except directly diagonal two. So if I went up to that blue, I would get hit. If I went to here, I would get hit. Um, if I went over here, I would get hit. I want to blow that up. Is there any way for me to like blow that up and jump out of the way? That seems unlikely. I don't want to attack the eye yet because it's about to open anyway. Hmm. You know, I was going to attack the blue, but maybe I focus on, like, going here, jumping up there, and getting to that rest spot. That would be out of range, and I can attack that crystal instead, and then, like, glide back down to that one, maybe. Now, sadly, I would need 5 AP, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to get out of range, which is a bummer, because I was hoping to use this telekinesis to get plus 2 range and attack that blue die without getting hurt. But I don't think there's currently any way for me to do that. Mm. All right, so I'll use telekinesis for the 5 AP. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Pretty dull. And yeah, I don't need to use any of these yet because my deck's getting a little bit low and fixes on a rest spot. So I kind of like to get through Mystic's turn uh, without running through my deck and then get back to fix and rest. So I'll keep both of these for now. So nobody's in range of the blood shot. We do go up to three rage now. The eye is still open. Going into Mystic's turn. Um, oh, okay. That's actually... I mean, I don't love the attack, but the fact that we're getting another eye open right off the bat, I like that a lot. Good thing we're on opposite sides of the world, because we don't have to worry about Fix being hit by this. And I really want Mystic to get all the way up to there. And yeah, two, three, so even there would be safe for him. Let's see, if I use Invigorate, I'll be immune to that. Ooh, I can use Pull Up to uh, jump straight to that. And then I would still have uh, four AP, one, two, three, four. But that would be taking away a card, and if I'm drawing two more... Okay, I think, I think I'd still have just enough for me to be safe for Fix to rest us. So yeah, let's do it. I'm going to use uh, Invigorate as my action, mainly to get the 4 AP and to ignore red. I'm going to use Pull Up to actually get up there. So that's Bloop. I don't take any damage because of the action card I played. One, two. I do lose a card from my grip. Three, four. Making it happen, baby. Making it happen. We only have one, two, three the eye, and then that one white die we left way behind, which we can just drop to whenever. And once again, we uh, dodged the bloodshot, and the eye was already open, so we don't care about that. Let's see what Fix is facing. Ah, oh, sweeping gaze. No, and I just moved into, <laughs> into range. Uh, now, this says two targets. That means that, like, uh, literally the next player would also have one of these on them. It would just smash, like, everybody everywhere. I think you get hit twice if you're in both ranges. Luckily, we're still at three raids, so just one attack. But yeah, this is terrible. I mean, it's definitely hitting Mystic. And not much Mystic can do about it unless he dropped down to here. Um, but that would be pretty much consigning Fix to having to get like all three of these while Mystic focused on the eye, which we could actually do. 
we could actually do. Might be a good time to try to close the eye. All right, well, pff, let's see. I think I have a crazy plan <laughs> um, to use this Relic Staff to be amazing this turn for fix. That's what we're gonna do. Let's see what happens. So he's got four AP and he's immune to blue. So I'm gonna use two AP because he's on a rest spot to rest, because we're almost out of cards. So I've got two AP left. And if this works, y'all are going to be witness to some majesty. <laughs> I'm going to move one, taking a damage. Two right there. No AP left. But I've got feeling good. I can climb one and strike one, plus one to either if at full health. I'm not at full health, but I can move in one. We do lose a card from our deck and do one damage there. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I misread the card. I thought uh, Avalanche would let me do one damage to the white and then drop down and do two to the blue. But uh, it's not quite as good because it's glide up to one and then strike that amount. So if I choose to glide for zero and to stay where I am, I also do zero damage. Yeah, my turn of awesome awesomeness is not as cool as I thought it would be. Darn. Oh, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> I know that uh, my telekinesis lets me shoot farther is coming. So I'm still going to use avalanche while that is one life. It says glide up to one, strike that amount, then glide up to two and strike that amount. So I'm going to ignore the one. Ah, this isn't great. <laughs> Ignore the one, glide up to two, strike here. Now I do have to suffer another minus one from our hand, or I mean our deck. But I do uh, two damage there. I'm going to use Old Rusty to add plus two to a strike, finish it off entirely. And because Relic Staff uh, had the blue icon, I don't suffer any uh, damage from that. Yeah, I wanted that to be awesome, and it wasn't. Ah, this is dead. Now, ah, this is, I don't, blah, blah, blah. you know what? Let's not, never mind. Let's not even do that yet. Just seems dumb to leave this guy behind. I'll go and use Old Rusty on that attack, blow that up. And now I'm ready to use my Avalanche to drop down there or whatever later, I guess. But then we're both going to take two damage. Oh, this is not good. So the Sweeping Gaze sweeps us both. Oh, my lord, fix. Oh, I'm so sorry, buddy. Uh, <laughs> okay, we can survive. We can survive. I mean, maybe we can survive. Let's see what's happening now to Mystic. The next climber? No! Oh, or discard your highest AP card. Uh, but the eyes opens, we gotta do it twice. So I gotta keep two cards just for fix to discard. Then I'll have no cards on his turn. Oh, this card is nastier in solo than not. Oh my gosh. Okay, so if I, uh, if I use a card, I'll just leave fix with two AP and nothing else and he can just heal himself. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that all seeing is leaving me in a bad way with the eye open. Well, let's see for a second. Is there anything insane I could do? <laughs> what if Mystic moved one here, dashed to there, and fell to that? Moved over again, so that would be two AP so far. Fell all the way down to there, took a damage on the way. And then he could hit the eye closed. And then fix would just have to discard one card. But we'd still be down. I mean, all of that would need... Uh, so yeah, whatever. I'm just going to use two AP for uh, Mystic. And I guess I'll move one and then heal three times, maybe? And then the card attack makes it discard both of these. We have no cards in hand as Fix is taking his turn. <sighs> but we're alive. But we're alive. Maybe not for long. Ooh, blink. Huh. Ha huh, ha. Huh. <laughs> oh god, that one damage will kill him. And I'll get pushed, so he's gonna fall. Um, um, okay, okay, okay. So I just get two AP, because I have no cards in hand. I think if I go here, and then spend one AP to heal, the blink gives me one uh, damage, and I get push one, which makes me fall to there, close to the crystal I wanted to be at anyway. It's not the end of the world, Mike, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's not not the end of the world, but we're alive. Uh, we survived to fix, or we survived to Mystic's turn. Most health is Mystic, and Eye is open, it'll take four da- no, no, okay, this one. So three damage, or two if the eyes close. That, I really don't mind at all. Ooh, okay, this is good, this is good. Well, it's not good as we only have one card left, but hey, here we go. Let's go ahead and use uh, the Memento of Mystic to cycle four cards of our choice. Of our choice, let's just grab the highest value ones, or the ones with, like, blue attack, so that's boom, and... Um, ooh, Dino is so good. Okay, we'll, we'll do those four. So they'll be at the bottom of our deck just in time for a fix, but what can we do here? What can we do here? I want to blow up the blue die near Mystic. That's the highest die remaining, so if we can get that, we're in a beautiful spot. Ooh, if we use Watch Out, we can go to there and drop, and then Telekinesis is plus two range. I don't think it has to be, like, orthogonal. I think I can go to there, so I can blow that up without even getting hurt. Which means I'll go and use Ascend just for its 4 AP. I'll go here for free with Watch Out. Fall to there. I'll go and play Telekinesis with my 3 Strike. Blow that up. 
And I got one AP left. And I'm at full health, at least for the moment. So I think I want to go, woo, ah! I do take one damage falling through that. But now I'm uh, in eye land. We're ready to drop down to the last one. So we're very close. We're very close here. And we're getting uh, three cards for fix. Oh, unless I forget uh, three damage to Mystic. Ooh, he's almost dead too. And we're at four rage. Oh my God. All right, this could make or break us. What does Fix get? All seeing. No. The next person. Okay, that, even one of those would kill Mystic right now. Even one of them would kill Mystic, but we can discard cards. Uh, oh, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. Um, I still have Fix's Avalanche. There should be some way for me to capitalize on that and hit the eye to close it so that Mystic only has to lose like one thing. But then Fix would die from the attack. I have no way to block myself from blue attacks this turn. Okay, let's imagine. Let's imagine for a second. I use Radiance to get five. Okay, and I use Dino. So Radiance gets me five AP. Let's mark this because this is going to be a tense one. I use Dino to hop right up to that, which discards one of our last two cards, but we still have grip. We still have a single one, so we're here. Okay, I've got five AP left. And I'm going to use two of my five AP to heal. <laughs> this is so crazy. We can use the other three AP to blow that up, which does deal one of that. And then to keep Mystic alive, <laughs> I'm gonna use my Avalanche. I'm gonna glide one, then strike for one, glide two, then strike for two, which takes me here for the first one, here for the second one. So I do two damage and the eye closes. Or was I here? It was one, two, now I was here. That uh, does that, that does that. Okay, and then because the eye is closed, we only resolve this once, the next climber has to do minus one health and plus one uh, corruption, whatever it is, or discard their high AP card. We have one card left. So Mystic's not dead. And then we draw three, we only have one card, but it is a card, yay. But because our grip is empty, he stays where he is. He falls, oh my gosh. Look where he is, look where he is. We have a chance, people. We have a real chance here. I cannot believe that. We just gotta freaking stay alive. Okay, so let's see what is Mystic facing on his turn, because he is alive. Oh no, that's not good. Okay, most health is fix. Oh, most health is fix. And he would take two damage, and currently I have no way to heal him. So I, I need to, uh, what do I, do? okay. Um, 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 um. He has four, so if I can heal him twice, then he'll have the most health, or they'll be tied. He can take the two damage, because the eyes isn't open, and I'll still have two AP to rest and get seven cards back. That's what we're doing. So we're playing this for four AP, a uh, two to heal, two to rest. It'll give us another turn. That's really just what I'm looking for. And then Baleful Stare, since the eyes closed, does two damage. He's just right back where he started, but we have some cards. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we're holding on. Come on, okay. Ooh, Bloodshot for fix. And it's gonna flip the eye open. Three damage, he can't survive that. Oh gosh, he literally can't survive that. Um, ooh, except <laughs> I got old Rusty, which is block two. So if I can give him even one health this turn, he will not die. That's even assuming that he gets hit by it. Can I get out of range? So I can glide down two to there, smash that, and then, isn't that out of range? Yes, that's right, exactly two diagonal. Oh, this is so good, this is so good. So he needs four AP to glide to and attack for two. And then if Mystic can just smash that thing, we will win this. I am so, ah. <laughs> so what I'm actually gonna do, I wanna draw more cards from Mystic because I need to get a five so we can kill that thing in one go or whatever. So I'm gonna use Watch Out to go to there, diagonally one, and get four AP. So I'll glide to here, that's one. I do lose a card from our grip. but We have just enough left so that Mystic will have one card left. Uh, two, three to blast that. And what the hey, one to heal. But the bloodshot misses us by the narrowest margin. Although the eye opens up, he's looking at him. Stab it right in there, Mystic. Get him good. And yeah, I don't even think I care what this last card is. Oh, but it would be a big one. In fact, now that we're at four rage, it's attacking both of them. And in three rows, because the eye's open. But is the eye open? Is it really? Because I got a little radiance for you. Five AP. Hey, we could take it to seven strike. We don't need to, but we could. So bloom, the eye would close. And heck, even if he wasn't dead, we could both just drop to the ground and chill down here out of range. We had one card left. The final attack would have killed both of us. Wow, that was a tight win. We did get two out of the three cubes and we beat it on hard. So to get the maximum score for unlocking the campaign, we would have tried to go for that last cube and we could have started on two rage expert. Oof, that would have made things way worse. <laughs>
So I'm pretty happy with my kind of sort of nearly perfect performance there. But that was Leviathan Wilds. Uh, let me get into my thoughts on the game and how I feel about this one. All right, so that was a pretty exciting play. Uh, but what do I think of Leviathan Wilds? So first of all, I love the theme. I was a, a big fan of Shadow of the Colossus, as I said earlier, and having all these like really nicely illustrated, big, different Leviathans, I think there'll be uh, 20, more than 20 in the final release, is uh, pretty exciting. And it's a minor touch, but the fact that you are saving them instead of murdering them, because Shadows of the Colossus was all about like kind of the, <laughs> the guilt and the toll of that, there's a more heroic mission, I like that a lot. And the variety in the Leviathans, again, I've played five of them, is pretty cool. Uh, you know, they've got different card activations. They tend to have sort of a theme to their cards and different things they do. And then the actual unique mechanics. Uh, the first three didn't have much unique except for, like, the map of them themselves. But uh, the fifth one having the eye, the fourth one has, like, this frost mechanic. I think uh, those are pretty cool. I I'm hopeful that... The fact that the fourth and fifth one have kind of unique and more complex things going on mean that that's going to continue for like the other 15 that we haven't played yet and that they're going to each have like bring their own unique thing because like the icons on the boards aren't changing. And yes, some of them are more vertical, some of them are more horizontal, some of them have like more gaps to jump across. But in the end, like the traversal across the Leviathans, you know, can feel a little bit similar with the same like icons to avoid. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping they really leverage like fun, unique mechanics for each one to keep the experience fresh. And that's one potential concern for the game. It does have a somewhat similar kind of flow to it in each game, you know, in that you are climbing up, you're attacking the crystals, often leaving a few and then dropping down, at least that's how I tend to tackle it. The, the tactical variety of how you play your cards and like of the kind of traversal of the Leviathans can change up quite a bit, especially as you build different decks and things. But in some ways, it reminds me a bit of a dungeon crawler that only has kill every enemy missions. You know, like a lot of crawlers like to vary things up and kind of have different scenarios. Um, this one, you know, feels kind of like it's sort of a similar thing each time. So again, having more of these mechanics like eyeballs and such will be great to keep the experience exciting and fresh. Now, in terms of the core gameplay, I really love this. I love that you're managing your deck as a resource um, and that, you know, you're using cards. They have the dual use. I think the bottom effects, the skills are great. You didn't really see this in the solo playthrough, but there is a lot of uh, cooperative possibilities here. Uh, you can, like, really boost people on their turns or save them from nasty effects. And the whole idea of how you want to spend your AP, how quickly do you want to push and like accelerate the game by using a lot of cards, or do you want to slow play it and not have to rest as much? I find all that really compelling, the management of your health, all that stuff. And also the deck building, it's super basic, and I personally appreciate that. Although I think by the end of the campaign, you'll have like 10 to 12 cards for your character. Remember, you pick four out of those to actually use. And like I said, I think you'll have 10 or more classes, each with their own six cards. So it sounds like the game is going to have a ton of variety in terms of how you interlock these decks. But the actual like time it takes to set up your deck, even at the end of the campaign when you have every little thing unlocked, probably won't be like more than two or three minutes. Now, that being said, do I have any other concerns? Um, I have noticed the game can slow down quite a bit with three or four players, especially four players. And it's not just sort of the downtime of waiting for other people's turns. They don't take that long. But again, if it's four player, they can take a little while. But it's also the fact that sometimes you're getting attacked outside of your turn or you're helping other people outside of your turn, which can burn your cards. So I've had games, again, at that three or four player count where somebody uh, got hurt so much in other players' turns or had to use so many cards in other players' turns that their turn became kind of a like almost nothing turn or a like I'm just going to heal or rest the entire time turn. And especially, again, when you're waiting for, like, four people to go before you get to go again, uh, it's not necessarily the best. So, you know, this is my personal preferences. I don't tend to like downtime in games very much. But this is one that I really love for solo and two-player. Uh, Three-player is okay, and four-player hasn't been as good. But that's true of basically any dungeon crawler or adventure game like this, so it's nothing new. But mentioning true solo, I think the true solo mode works awesome. I like that you're managing two characters. I think uh, it's more interesting tactically because of that. But the fact that you only have to deal with one deck and the cards can be applied to either character makes it a really smooth, feels like you're still playing the same game, but without needing to like kind of jump back and forth. It's always annoying to do that. Something else that I should note is so far all I've seen in terms of narrative is that you have a single card for each Leviathan, kind of like a little intro and outro with very quick description of like what they look like and then a little bit of dialogue between the characters, which says to me this is not going to be a narrative heavy game. So 
for me, that's kind of a positive. I like just this very quick, and you can play any of the Leviathans one off, so you don't even have to like play the campaign if you don't want to. You can just jump to the one that seems most interesting. So with that kind of play, sort of a campaign with unlockables and one-off play, I don't mind that the narrative is very brief, but if you're looking for like a Sleeping Gods or something where you're reading like paragraphs after paragraph of text, this is not the game for you. Oh, and one final thing to note, I also really like how they do the difficulty tracking. Um, it really does make a huge difference to choose uh, a lower or higher starting rage. I think that's a nice, smooth way to do it. And the fact that you can like go as easy or as hard as you want, they even have a story mode where nothing really gets bad until two full rounds through the deck. I really appreciate that for like playing with my kids. And I also like that they reward you for pushing it. Like a lot of the replay of the game, if you're kind of this more obsessive kind of person, is going to be like trying to get each Leviathan defeated with the highest difficulty and with the little, uh, you know, experience tokens being grabbed there to unlock the maximum level of awesome stuff. Although, you know, it's a board game. No one's going to be watching you. So you could just uh, open those decks up no matter what <laughs> if you wanted to. But yeah, I'm really excited for Leviathan Wilds. This is one that I am definitely very into. And hopefully this video is helpful for you to make a choice of whether you are interested in it too. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you at the next stop.